Hello everyone, and welcome to Hyper Analyzing LCS, the series where I discuss the biggest macro plays and smallest micro plays from the LCS and give attention to the tiniest details that can decide the outcome of the game. This week, we will look at some plays from Week 6 of the 2021 LCS Summer Split. Cloud9 struggled in their game against FlyQuest, but Fudge was having a great game on Akali, including this quadra kill. Trying to aim spot to uh, find an ulti, and they're gonna actually commit to this. That's Fudge. Tomo does have teleport. He's got a TP early, otherwise the Nocturne will deny his chance. Yeah, Tomo getting in there. There's an Nocturne oh, turning out the last, as you mentioned. But TP does come through now. Triple's gonna be the target. They need to pick him off. Fudge diving into the back line. Cloud9 aligned it so well. Is that excited? Oh! They're trying to make it happen, but Fudge, he's found the quadra. Give the man the penta. He's so low, but he's not gonna get it as Kumo finds the reset, but he's gonna be left for dead. It's Cloud9 this time. They're fine, their ace. Oh my god. Fudge is looking for a huge teleport flank, and he backs off the bot lane push to find it. FlyQuest does not have vision of Fudge as he teleports, and the Nocturne ult is used early enough that Fudge isn't even spotted when he does reach a FlyQuest ward. FlyQuest backline ends up too far forward in this fight as Tomo is holding the final bullets of Jin ult, not wanting to shoot into the darkness, and Triple gets tagged by a very long range gold card by Perks. Flabber dives onto Triple, nearly executing him immediately, and Vulcan flashes forward to get Nautilus ult targeted on Tomo. All of FlyQuest gets corralled together as Cloud9 threaten their backline with Flabber diving in, Fudge on the teleport flank who just now gets spotted by FlyQuest, and Perks using Twisted Fate ult. FlyQuest's carries have nowhere to go as Fudge ults and finishes off Triple with an auto and Q. He does get stunned which pushes him down to about 1 quarter HP and he drops aggro with Twilight Shroud. Vulcan somehow finds a hook onto Tomo and he gets killed quickly with a passive empowered Akali auto attack getting the final hit. The second cast of Perfect Execution gets the third kill, and the first part of Shuriken Flip gets the fourth for Fudge. He is forced to Zionist as he gets taken into single digit HP numbers, and unfortunately for him, Kumo's stasis is used at the same time, so Fudge falls to a flash Q from Viego while the rest of C9 finish off the final kill. Although Cloud9 would eventually lose this game, Fudge played great on Akali, becoming the second C9 member in two weeks to get a quadra kill on the pick. Danny and the rest of the evil geniuses have gone on an incredible run in the LCS, and they keep coming up with huge plays like this fight around Dragon. Not the objective at all, but number three soul point is too big. Here we go. So, fight can be had, but Renekton does not frontline like Orn and does Kog'Maw deal the damage. Great oh, smite! Sir. Sven Skarin is the one who claims it so far. Orn Horn comes across, a time stun does not do it enough, and here comes the huge shuffle! Does Abadaga get it done? No, he does not, because Danny shuts everybody up! An ace in the red... Evil Geniuses have good positioning around Dragon, and Closer decides to go for the steal attempt, but he doesn't get it, and he uses his ult and flash for the play. The fight starts with the two frontliners, Sunday's Renekton and Impact's Orn. Impact wins out on this because the rest of EG are a lot closer than the rest of the 100 Thieves. Impact's ult hits 4, which further delays the 100 Thieves damage dealers from contributing to the fight. This allows EG to nearly take down Sunday before everyone from 100 Thieves is in the fight. Abadaga sees the chance to make a huge play and he goes in and knocks everybody back with Emperor's Divide, which looks great at first, but there is no damage to follow up. Sunday dies just before the Azir ult goes off, and Abadaga is forced to use Zonia's, so he isn't providing any damage either. Most of what's left of 100 Thieves' damage is focused on Chizuke, but he is able to flash away, and more importantly, Danny is the fed member on EG, and he destroys FBI and Huhi with a big Abelios ult with the Infernum gun. At this point, it's just a matter of cleanup, and Ignar finishes things off with a nice hook to secure the clean ace for the evil geniuses. That wasn't the only big play for Danny this week, as he also got a quadra kill against Immortals on his signature Samira. Looks like Baron's gonna drop rapidly enough that they won't have to worry too much about it. There's your paranoia. With paranoia cast, there's no way for Triss to TP in there in time. Impact's already jumping in. Cersei has to ulti over the wall defensively, and evil geniuses do that beautifully. And here we go. Another fight could start. Remember, that was just one ultimate coming in from Impact. Oh, Contracts flashing away as Immortals try to find the counterattack here. Contracts with the stasis. Tries to stay alive. Should die here. Yes, shut down by Raze. Insanity now trying to get away from Impact as another fight breaks out here between everybody else. Impact grabbing the kill on the enemy mid laner. Zerse having to try to get away, but here comes Jazuke with a resonating strike. Over the wall is Destiny with a grand entrance. Looking to lock down the evil geniuses, but it will not work. Danny's grabbing the kill on to Raze. Danny is popping off. Danny's got a quad kill and that is it! Following a bear intake by evil geniuses, Insanity finds a potential pick onto Contracts, 
which puts both of them at very low health. Impact chases after Insanity, and Contracts gets surrounded by the rest of IMT. Ignar has a good flank angle with Jizuke, but there isn't a lot of damage since this fight has become a 3v4. This fight moves pretty slowly at first, which is great for Dani since Samira needs to stack up her style points before using ult. The initial skirmish gets Dani within one style stack of his ultimate. Xerxes Guardian Angel gets popped, but Destiny finds a great angle through the wolf pit to engage onto Dani. Blade Whirl prevents a lot of Zaya's damage from getting to Dani or his support, and Dani is able to jump over the wall and get the kill. Now, with the final style point and the reset on his dash because of the takedown, Dani is able to ult through the rest of Immortals and pick up a Quadrico. Golden Guardians started their week of upset victories against 100 Thieves, getting a huge early lead off of this fight. Usage of the ultimate, which is the most damage, was going to be coming up. So if you get ignited, if you get hit by that, you will go down. Chime is six now. Yeah, oh, goes in, gets the Naga, but Abadaga going back in as well. Sticks again, low, but it's a counter kill. Looks so good for Golden Guardians. 100 Thieves have just thrown themselves into Golden Guardians, and FBI is going to get one on the back end, but a Blaze Olive and Sticks are going to finish off the job. And who he now? Alongside someday, the only two left alive, and it's gonna just be down to one as who he has got no flash, he's gonna dodge the W, but Iconic is just gonna take a bite out of his back. This fight is basically a 4v4, but 100 Thieves get the jump on Chime and Stixay out of the brush. Closer is the first to show, but with Sweeper running, Chime sees that there are many people in that brush, so he jumps in and ults, hitting three, but Stixay pulls him out with Fate's Call and what looks like a miscommunication. Since Stixay is the primary target, Closer dashes past Chime to try and pick him off. This is followed up by Yasuo's Last Breath and Kaisa's Killer Instinct, which actually ends up making this Callisto ult really good as it knocks up three and stops the thieves from killing Stixay. Iconic basically jumps straight up and comes back down to hit everyone with Stormbringer as Stixay flashes over the wall to safety. With all of the 100 thieves ults used early, Iconic and Ablaze Olive have enough damage to win the fight. FBI does pick up one kill, but he trades his flash and his life for it, and Stixay even comes back over the wall to claim the kill credit. The Golden Guardians take an early lead from this fight, and are able to snowball it into a victory against the top ranked 100 Thieves. The Golden Guardians got another big early game lead against Team Liquid with this insane series of plays. Thieves does have some really strong trading, some really strong ability to push the lane, but early game you don't have a lot of mana. They're trying to set up this dive though onto Alfari. Does he have the passive available for the stun? Because that will immune no, the red doesn't stun. He does not. They're able to set up the stun. Very nicely nice. done there. And Licorice with the first blood. This man has been popping off since switching over to the Golden Guardian. Absolutely. That is actually so big that they're able to get this kill. Oh, the TP's oh. coming in. He's slow to react. The, the TP's already ready to go. The flash into the stun and a blaze all against oh. itself away. They're just setting him up to knock him down. Jensen sends him an extra freebie. Licorice canceled the base. They didn't realize he was still there. So Jensen flashes in and now they're going to redive. Oh, and Alfari's about to die again. Or oh. is he? Iconic ends up getting the kill and he gets away. So it's a one for one trade. But Alfari's going to be losing even more now. Oh, the buffer on the hook. Nicely done there by Chime. That is totally worth it. It is the one for one. Now they're teaming. Oh, holy, holy in for the first four minutes of the game. Golden Guardians coming in for even more punishment now in the bottom lane as Licorice has 100% kill participation. Four kills, four minutes. This first dive is set up because of Blaze Olive's mid lane Callista has push advantage over Jensen's Diego. They dive top lane 3v1 and Alfari dies before Blaze Olive can even get an assist for his roam. Jensen uses his teleport to try and stop the dive, but it is not successful. The mid lane summoner spell discrepancy gets pretty interesting here as a Blaze Olive has taken cleanse. This is a huge win to get Jensen to use his global teleport just to match a Blaze Olive walking to top lane from mid lane. Additionally, a Blaze Olive summoner spell choice gives him the advantage in actual combat, which we will see here. Now, with the sword in the lane brush seeing GG's movements and seeing a Blaze Olive's recall channel, Team Liquid should be able to guess that Licorice is recalling in the next brush. They don't even wait long enough for a recall to complete before going in for this next engage, so they have to know that Licorice is still around. Jensen flashes in, but a Blaze Olive quickly cleanses the stun, that difference in summoner spells allowing him to survive. Jensen's dive has put it right next to Licorice, so he ends up being the one who gets stunned and killed. Meanwhile, Alfari has teleported back in, only to get knocked down to half health right away. Licorice and Iconic call to dive him again, knowing that they will trade Licorice's life, but this is very much worth it for the Golden Guardians for a few reasons. Mainly, the state of this minion wave is really bad for Alfari. 
since it is slowly pushing away from him, most of that farm will be wasted as his own minion wave will kill all of the opponent's minions. Normally, this is a situation that would force a top laner to use teleport, but Alfari already used his, so he will have to walk back to lane, missing this entire minion wave and maybe more. Licorice, on the other hand, can pick up most of this farm when it reaches his turret, and it will take a while for that wave to get that far without anybody there to push it, which gives him the time to do something else, which he does. As soon as he respawns, Licorice starts teleporting to the bottom lane, where they quickly pick up a kill on Tactical. This series of plays gives Golden Guardians a 1.5k gold lead less than 5 minutes into the game, while also wasting both of their opponent's teleports and allowing Licorice to make a play on the opposite side of the map while still extending a CS lead in the top lane. Golden Guardians go on to dominate the rest of this game and pick up their second huge upset win of the weekend. Thank you for watching this week's episode of Hyperanalyzing LCS. Hit subscribe and come back next week to see my analysis of week 7.